What's good guys? It's Michael and today we're going to be talking about the importance of mental practice and visualization and to becoming successful and being successful. How important is it actually? And this is a topic that we're actually going over in my psychology course and it's something we've probably all heard about that you, if you want to be more prepared for the task at hand, you have to mentally prepare and visualize beforehand. But I didn't know if there was any studies to prove this. So I went into the textbook and I did a little bit of research and I found three main studies, real life examples that support this. Now the first one, oh and I also have my computer here so I can be as concise and precise as possible. So, the first case was done on professional pianist Lu Chi Kung, and he was imprisoned for seven years, and during that time he hadn't touched the piano for once. After those seven years, when he came back, he played better than he had ever played before. And you may be thinking, how could you not touch the piano for seven years and come back better than you were before when you were already a professional? And he said this, I did practice every day. I put, sorry, I did practice every day. I rehearsed every piece I had ever played, note by note, in my head. And this just comes to show that it all starts in here. Even a person that is at the top of the level of their niche can improve through mental practice. So can you through daily activities. The second one was done in 2004 by a British team and they used fMRIs to show that watching dancing activated similar areas in the brain as did actually dancing yourself. And an fMRI, what it does is it observes the blood flow in areas of your brain to determine which areas of your brain are active at the moment. And like I said, they watched dancing and using the fMRI they found certain areas were active and then actually had them dance and yet again those same exact areas were active. And along those lines in 2001 there was another fMRI done showing um, imagining pain and actually having pain. And yet again, the same areas were stimulated. So not only are you visualizing it, you're manipulating your brain to actually feel. You're, in a sense, tricking your body as if it were actually happening. And these are older studies, 2001, 2004, 1986. But these are the three main ones that I found the most uh, significant and the most shocking to me. But there's more studies out there, and if you'd like to know, uh, you could research on your own, or if you want more, I could find some more for you if you'd like. Now, this displays that if you are more mentally prepared and you visualize before the task, you can become more prepared, and not just in the past, right? Because these are all past examples. If you have the opportunity to talk to any professional athlete or any professional in their field, ask them how many times they visualize or see themselves doing the activity or winning the competition before it even takes place. Chances are it's going to be hundreds, maybe even in some cases thousands of times before they even actually do the activity. So they know what's going to happen before it happens, or at least they're more prepared for what to do when it does occur. Now, going along this tricking your brain is when you watch YouTube videos, like me talking to you. This isn't going to be really applicable because there's nothing emotionally charging with what I'm saying. But if you were to watch someone fight, right, and you see them get hit, you're going to cringe as if you were getting punched. Also, if you're watching someone max out on bench and they're really, really struggling, subconsciously, your chest is going to activate. Now, these studies that we talked about before in the beginning of this video were more conscious. You have to 
physically um, bring attention to them to carry them out. But these are subconscious. You don't even think about them. And your muscles are activating as if you're inside the task. And this is visualization as well. Maybe it's not mental practice, but you're still tricking your mind into thinking you're doing it by watching someone else do it. And you may, go ahead, I, I dare you to try this out on your own and to try to watch a video and say, hey Michael, I was watching this guy squat and my, my legs didn't activate. I wasn't squeezing my legs as if I was squatting. Well, were you immersed in the activity? Were you involved in the activity? If you're looking at it and you're just like, oh, then no, of course not. But if you're immersed into it and you're engaged into watching the performance, then yeah, your body's going to take over as if it were actually doing it. Your mind is tricking your body. In conclusion, this shows that your mind dictates a lot more than what you think. We know that mindset has a lot to do with what people do later on on the road. What people decide is for them and what isn't for them. And if you can see it in your head, you can achieve it. Not everyone has to see it. It just has to start with one person and that's you. And as long as you can see it, there's there's nothing that can stop you. If you give consistent effort towards a goal that you have and you mentally prepare and you execute, step two, execute, you can't just do it in your head. Then you have to go out and apply it. If you execute, then you can accomplish anything you want. Anything that hasn't been done yet, you can do. Think about all the things we have. This camera, these softbox lights, this um, squat rack, the barbell, everything you have, a microwave, a bed, once didn't even exist. But someone had a dream and they executed. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to smash that thumbs up button, comment down below what you thought, and subscribe if you haven't already as this channel will help you become a better version of yourself. Hope you guys have a great day. I appreciate you.